this is Mr. Coates, and this is Apes Lecture number 11 on climate and ecology. Uh, one of the things that you have to realize is that ecology is basically run by the climate of the planet. So we have these areas throughout the planet that are called biomes, and so we get these large areas, for example, like this large area of desert right here, on the planet due to climate. Okay, and there are others. There's a desert, of course, right here. And there's some down here, and of course there's some out here. And if you look, these areas of desert are kind of in the same latitude regions. And then we have forests that are up in this latitude, and same thing goes up in here. And then tropical rainforest here, here, and throughout Indonesia. So these areas are the same, and they're at the same latitude. So we want to figure out exactly why that's going on. How are biomes distributed throughout the planet? Well, let's look at climate. Climate is the main driving force for the vegetation, which then drives the animal community for every biome on the planet. So remember that the Earth is tilted on its axis. So its axis is right here, and then it comes down to here. So the Earth is tilted on its axis, and because it's tilted on its axis, what happens is that we get uneven heating across the planet. Also, the fact that it's a uh, sphere, so it's round, this basically causes sunlight to be spread out over the very northern latitudes and very southern latitudes. Whereas in the equator region, we have very strong sunlight. What this does is we get these large circulation cells. So we have warm air that rises in this area, it comes across this way, and also rises up here and comes across this way. What we get here is a low pressure. Because air is rising, our pressure of our atmosphere becomes low in this area. Okay, now, as the air cools, then it sinks back to the, the Earth, and then it goes back this way, and also comes back this way. So we get these large areas, and so in this area we get, I'll write it out here, high pressure here because the air is going down towards the planet. So this is high pressure. So what this sets up is a high pressure, low pressure gradient. And so winds always want to go from the high pressure area, so this area right here, to the low pressure, which is around the equator and also around these areas, both in the North and South Pole. And so you have winds that come from those areas down towards the equator. And then also away towards the poles here. And then from the poles to these areas. So once again, air sinks at the poles. And as air rises, it warms up and goes this way and this way. So we get these large circulation patterns. Now the ones closest to the equator are called Hadley cells after the guy who discovered them. This sets up wind patterns across the globe, these wind patterns. And if the globe was not spinning, these winds would be straight. However, the globe is spinning. So then that causes a difference in our wind directions. So what you see is these actual curved wind paths. Instead of straight wind paths, you get these curved wind paths, and this is because of the Coriolis effect, which is the effect of the Earth's spinning motion on moving particles. And air has moving particles, water also has moving particles. So the next slide I'm going to show you is a demonstration of the Coriolis effect using a merry-go-round. So what we have here is a group of students that are on a merry-go-round. Unfortunately, the video is not that high quality, but they're passing a ball back and forth. And what they're going to do, they're going to try and pass the ball straight to each other, okay, straight across, okay, and what you want to do is watch the motion of the ball. And there's going to be several different views of this, and I'll play it twice so you can get a good handle on it. As we play it, watch what happens to the ball. See, the ball there travels in a curved path in relation to the actual merry-go-round. Now, if we were to look at this in relation to the Earth, the actual land around the merry-go-round, the ball is actually traveling in a straight path. That's kind of hard to tell, but you can actually see how the ball curves because of the spinning motion, the spinning motion of the merry-go-round. Let's watch it one more time. And so wind particles and water particles follow this same kind of path depending on how uh, the Earth is moving. So if we look at water currents, ocean currents are very important in climate as well. And like I said, because of the Coriolis effect, these water currents also travel in curved paths. 
we get these large areas of water circulation throughout the world's oceans called gyres. So these large gyres of the ocean, if you look, that they travel in opposite directions. And so in the northern hemisphere, they go clockwise. And in the southern hemisphere, they go counterclockwise. This is the same for the wind patterns. So wind patterns are deflected to the left in the southern hemisphere and deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere. And this is because of the Coriolis effect. So remember, climate drives these large areas of different biomes. The average rainfall, the temperature, the amount of solar radiation, also the oceanic currents drive these different ecosystems. So we have to remember that climate drives the plant communities and then the plant communities drive the animal communities. If you know what the climate is like in these areas, then you're going to know what the uh, animal communities are like. So climate is key. I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned for the next slide with your comprehension questions and make sure you have those answered uh, as well as a separate question as you review notes in class.